How do you control real estate without actually ever owning it? If you could understand how to do that, I'm telling you right now, it would have a huge impact on your personal finances in the craziest of ways. We get so caught up in the game of ownership when actually it's all about control. And what I'm gonna do is break it all down for you in this video and show you how you can control way more real estate than any bank would ever want you to. It is amazing to me how many people get caught up in the illusion of ownership, which is so expensive in contrast to control. Reality is controlling money is more important than owning money. And I know that sounds really weird for some of you that are watching this right now that are thinking, Chris, what do you mean by that? I mean, what do you mean controlling it versus owning it? Well, I'm gonna break it down for you in today's video uh, because when we talk about real estate, you can get a lot more real estate if you focus on control versus ownership. For just a moment, I'm gonna put up here on the screen, think how most people end up telling you how to build wealth. wealth. They're in this game called accumulation. And accumulation means what? It means over time to build a pile of money. I want you to think for a moment of like Uncle Scrooge. Do you remember that from DuckTales? Did I love DuckTales growing up? That, that dates me. But Uncle Scrooge had his money bin. And what he did is he would earn it and then he was a miser. He was stingy. He was known for that. And he would save it and he would accumulate it. Well, most of us actually operate that way. I put my money in my 401ks. I put money in my IRAs. I put money in the stock market. I put money in savings account. And over time, I want it to get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And then I can finally take that pile of money and what can I do with it? I can actually put it into a real estate transaction. Now, what's the problem with this? Well, the problem is, is that if you want to own a piece of property, um, the nationwide median right now is probably around $250,000. You need $250,000 to own a home. And some people are either thinking, well, I've got to buy it cash. That's going to take forever to save that amount of money for the average person. Or you're thinking, I'm going to put a 20% down. But even a 20% down, what's 20% of a quarter million dollars? It's $50,000. So if you're in this accumulation mindset of ownership, you're like, well, I want to own this, so I need to save, and then I can own. Now, I'm not telling you that that is bad. In fact, I think it is good for you to have habits of saving money and being able to do that. I'm just telling you that there's a faster way. And rather than accumulation, we're talking about a methodology that says, what I'm actually doing is controlling money. Because if we go to this first example, everyone's goal when they own real estate is someday to have it what? Paid off. I buy the house, I get that thing paid off, and then I say, I own this. I don't owe the bank anything, I'm not paying interest anymore, and I'm the winner. But in a lifetime, even if you're an aggressive saver, how many homes can you own paid off free and clear? Dude, for the average person, we're talking about one, maybe two, probably not more than that. So control says, I'm not ever trying to pay off the asset. I'm trying to manage this asset. So here's what can control can look like. Before we talk about how you buy it, Let's just assume for a moment that, because uh, I'm going to give you the three most important things to look for in nailing a great deal. When it comes to control, I'll usually hold on to a house for five to seven years. And why do I do that? Because if this is profit, right here on the left side, raise that up, and this is time, the reality is, is that you get over time a diminished return. And this right here is like year five and seven. This means that in the 10th year, the 20th, the 30th year, this home has almost no juice to give you. You've gotten all your money out of it that you can possibly get out of it. And so control says, I'm not trying to pay it off. I'm going to own it for five years. I'm going to get a maximum profit and then I'm going to sell it. The bank gets paid off and I get a grundle of money and now I can go and take one house and turn it into two homes or four homes or eight homes and then I get to grow and expand. So when finding a home, we have to ask ourselves, what does it really take to control property? It takes three things to control property. The first thing that you need is you need a deal, not just a house. You need a good deal. And I'll qualify in a moment what a good deal is. The second thing that you need to control real estate is you need money, 
right? Someone's got to put up the 20% down payment, which is a requirement with investment real estate in most economies. You know, when the economy gets really aggressive and it's been going up and up, the banks start creating programs for like 10% down and 5% down. Um, you should be afraid of those and never actually participate in those programs because that's an indication that we're in a bubble. And when that bubble pops, you're going to be upside down in that property, which means you're going to owe more than the value of the home. So you need a deal, you're gonna need some money, and then the third thing that you're gonna need is credit. Someone's gotta actually put their credit on the line if you're gonna be financing real estate. Now here's my question for you. Between the deal, the money, and the credit, which is most important? Is it the money, is it the credit? Most people would say, oh, it takes money to make money. The money is really important, that's probably the most important. I disagree, money is everywhere. The most important of the three is neither money or credit, it's the deal. And here's what I know, when you find a good deal, the money shows up. Even if you don't know what you're doing, the highest likelihood of making a deal happen is if you actually have a really good deal. Now there's a couple of ways of defining a good deal and then I'm gonna show you how to get your hands on amazing deals at the end of this as a bonus, so hang tight. When you actually get a good deal on something, this can mean one of two things. It's either qualified by equity in the home, which means that you're buying the home for less than it's worth, and that difference is equity. The home is worth $250,000, and I can buy it for $200,000. That's equity. Now you have a deal that's gonna pique some, some people's interest that have money and credit, and you can make something happen. But more important than equity for me is the ultimate equalizer of all investment opportunities. It's called ROI, which stands for a return on investment. And this is factored in by way of a percentage. If the stock market pays out 5% and IRAs pay out 4% and this annuity pays out 3%, an ROI for me in real estate that makes sense is a double digit ROI that starts with a two. It's in the 20% range. So if I can find, for example, a property with a 20% ROI, here's what that means. If I make 20% this year, 20% this year, 20, 20, 20, those add up to 20, 40, 60, 80, 100%. So in five years, I double my money. That's an ROI at a minimum standard that I play with. And part of the reason why I'm so young and have had all the success is because I learned early on that if you play with stupid low ROIs, they don't multiply very fast. Like it's crazy how long it takes for money to multiply. But when you start doing 20%, now we're talking a handful of years. And that's enough time for you to get excited and say, hey, if I put my head down, work hard and work smart, I can build a lot of wealth in a very short period of time as opposed to working a lifetime and then running short on the money, which is what happens to most people. So what do you do with this information? Well, first of all, at the end of this video, I've got another one coming up that will actually walk you through the strategy that I'm about to deliver to you. It's called a lease option. And lease option is about controlling real estate. It basically says someone owns this property and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna step in and I'm gonna control it. You might even have to put no money up front to be able to start controlling this asset. In many cases, you have to put up three, four, five thousand dollars but not 20%, not $50,000. There's a way of doing that too, but ultimately I've created a, a system here where I help you find deals in your backyard that are good deals by virtue of equity or ROI, and then because the home is already controlled and owned by somebody else, the money's already in it and the credit's already in it, you don't need these things. You could also bring on a partner that puts up money and credit and go buy your hands on a really good deal and actually make something happen that way. So that strategy right now, it's called a lease option. I do lease option in a very special way. It's called a lease with an option to purchase. I call it compassionate financing. In fact, many of you have read, I, I've written an entire book about it. It's right over here. The Straight Path to Real Estate Wealth basically documents how you go into your backyard to get your hands on the very best deals that are out there. By the way, you can click the link on most of my videos and get this for free. If you don't have it already, I just ask that you cover the shipping and then the book is going to be sent to you. Many people will read that book and start taking action on real estate. Now that's why I make this video. Get out there and do something for yourself. You know, before I finish this up, I just wanna digress for a moment and share with you that how I got in this position in the first place and financially free at 26, I've, had, I've lived such a privileged life when at 22, I was freaking down and out. As in, my career dreams got dashed to pieces. I found out I wasn't gonna be a doctor. Uh, my wife was disappointed in our life and what was being created. And uh, dude, it was a sucky, sucky time in my life where I felt like nothing was going my way. And frankly, there were moments when I just hated my life. I feel disgust right now just even like thinking about what that was like for me. 
um, when four years later I was financially free. And what I did was exactly what's in this book. So the video that is coming up next that I'm recommending for you will actually show you how to take this lease option methodology, find homes in your backyard, and actually I'll show you how to profit in five different ways. So you can make a pile of money up front, you get to make money along the way, you get tax benefits, you make a big bunch when you actually sell the property, and then a fifth bonus one that I'll let you discover for yourself. But if I were starting out all over again, ground zero, and I possess this knowledge, um, I'd be a millionaire very quickly all over again. If you're not currently a millionaire, it's time that you become one. And you can't follow society's game plan for doing that. You've got to learn how to do that on your own. So what I want you to do is click on the recommended video coming up next here and actually learn how to do this. Or also click on the link below and get your hands on a free copy of this book and figure out exactly what you need to do to get into real estate controlling it versus owning it. With control, you can own a hundred or a thousand times more real estate than accumulation will ever allow you. So if you're looking for a shortcut, you found it and you found it here, my friend. Make sure that you are a subscriber. Every day I pop out a new video just like this one that is designed to help you become your own personal wealth genius so you don't rely on society, you don't rely on financial planners, you don't rely on a boss. You learn how to financially rely on you because ultimately this is your life and money determines opportunity. And if you want more opportunities, you need more money. If you want more money, that's exactly what I'm sharing with you. So make sure you subscribe and do me a favor. Will you give a thumbs up and smash that button for me? It tells YouTube that you're liking this content, not just subscribing, but smashing that like button. Ring that bell and I'll notify you when tomorrow's video comes out.